Hello everybody and welcome back to Tip Tut. Today we're taking a look at the puppet pin tool inside of After Effects. Now what I've got here is just a little octopus that's been puppet pinned to move about a bit. I've made this in Illustrator and imported it as three separate layers but that's just for ease of use inside this tutorial. You can do this with whatever image you want and it can be one single image. Um, you just have to do a little bit of preparation first. So let's just jump right in then. The first thing you're going to need to do is grab your octopus layers. Now I've got three separate layers here and I have a um, octopus composition that I've already made. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete all of the layers that are already in here and I'm just going to drop in my three separate layers that make up my octopus. Now that's going to obviously pop them into the composition like so. So I'm just going to change the order around so that they're the uh, correct size and I'm just going to shift the position so that he doesn't look quite so squished. Let's pull these guys in the back down a little bit like so. So we now have our three octopus layers inside the composition. Um, the puppet pin tool is very simple. What it effectively allows you to do is take a still image and pin it in certain places to create customized anchor points and alter the physical shape of the image. For example, let's take our octopus's head here and I'll just quickly rename this head. And I'm going to choose the puppet pin tool, which uh, is the little pin like board pin option up here in your toolbar. If you long press on this, you'll see you have a number of options, which I'll go through in a moment. But for now, just select the puppet position pin tool. Now, what this is going to do is um, it will show you the layer that you're working on and the boundaries of that layer. And you want to click in the places where you want that layer to be manipulated. For example, if I were to place a pin directly between the octopus's eyes here, it will create a circle. If I click towards the top of his head, like so, um, I can then grab and move this pin around and it will move it around and stretch it around to the other anchor point that I've made um, within that position, okay? So if I were to create another one around the mouth, like so, and I were to move this one, it would create more anchor points or points of fixture um, around our design. So for example, something like these three would work well for the head. Once you've created these, you'll notice that in your effects uh, drop down that's appeared in your layers palette, there'll be an effect called puppet now. And underneath that, there'll be mesh one, which has a density an expansion rate uh, and some deform options. Now under the deform options, you'll have your three separate pins that you've made. And under each ETH, one of these pin drop downs, you'll find that there is a position keyframe. So if you hit U, that will collapse down everything apart from the three keyframes that you've just made by creating those three pins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna push these keyframes back to the first frame of our animation and make sure our playhead is aligned. And I'm gonna do the same sort of thing to my other layers and I'll show you a few of the different options. So we have our other octopus legs here, and we'll just call this legs upper. Oh, well, they're not really legs, are they? Limbs upper. And we're going to create some more basic puppet pin position tools. Now, all these four front legs are on the same layer. So what I'm going to do is create a pin at the top of each leg for like a shoulder joint, and then one roughly a third down. Remembering that these are the places in which you'll be manipulating your puppet around. So one of those again at the end of each limb as well. Now, if I press U on this layer, that's gonna give me a lot of keyframes to be working with. But if I then shift or move one of these particular points, you'll notice that each point is reactive to the others. So if I really distort this, you can get some very odd and perhaps not correct shapes like so. But if I were to stretch this, you'll notice it impacts the other leg as well. So this is where separating your legs out onto other layers might help. I haven't done it here just to illustrate this point. If I collapse this down and I go to my limbs lower layer, I can do the same thing and add some puppet pins for each segment of the back limbs and it reacts in the same way. Okay. So now we've got basic pins for each layer. We're just going to open up all of these, but you'll notice like on the um, leg limbs, for example, if we do manipulate some of these, they can go a bit crazy and fold and pinch and things in certain ways that you wouldn't want to expect. This is where the other um, 
puppet pin tools come in handy. So let's take our head layer for the sake of simplicity. Uh, we'll collapse down everything else and we'll add some other effects to this puppet pin. So if I long press on my layer at the top, you notice we have a starch tool. Now what this starch tool does, if I click a layer, that basically creates a separate point which tells the puppet pin to treat this as a little bit more viscous. Um, so for example, if I click on, if I drag this point at the moment, you'll see that both of these eyes get very squished down. Okay, now you may not push it to that extent, but if you place a starch in each of those eyes, as you spin, they'll get squished less and less. You'll notice that that's going all the way around, hasn't squished quite so much. If we remove those starch points, you'll notice it's getting squashed and stretched into all sorts of weird shapes. Okay, with those starch points in there, it retains more of its original shape. See, it's not as quite triangly as you drag that shape around. For example, this might work well if we go into our limbs layer with our starch tool. This might work well if you were to add starch points in between each of the puppet points. So if we were to drag this around, you'll notice it's not getting quite as pinched. Yeah, that's creating more of a thicker um, section here than compared to this part here, which is getting really, really deformed. You'll notice that this can almost disappear if you were stretched that too far, whereas this one stays a lot, lot thicker because of those starch points that we've added in. Okay, I'll just reposition those and I'll add a bunch of starch points in between all of these limbs, like so. Do that on the lower level as well. Um, so here, here, and I'm being very rough here for the sake of the tutorial. Okay, so all of these are now starched. There are some more tools. There is the bend pin tool, which basically means if you select anywhere here, this will create a point in which you can warp or um, squash or stretch certain elements. So for example, if we were to place this on our octopus's head, um, perhaps down where the mouth is, you might be able to squish or stretch the mouth to create some expressions and this does take into account all of the starch points and everything that you've added before now i don't need it for this one but it's just there as an example the puppet pin advance tool if you select and add this it creates as you can see a bit more control so this creates yourself a um, puppet pin point which kind of combines all of the above um starching and stretching and stuff so not only can you move or reposition this say for example we were to put an advanced pin on one of the limbs not only can you reposition this uh, around the stage like so you can also do things like rotate that particular point so there's a lot more properties per puppet pin point okay and then there's the puppet pin overlap tool and what this does is anything that you select you can choose this to be the leg or the limb that is underneath the other layer. Okay, so if we were to just put all um, puppet pins on this here and then we drag this leg over the top, that's going to make sure that this leg goes underneath and this leg goes on top. So anything that you click just goes on the top of the stack, essentially. So now we've got all those puppet pin positions in place, that's a lot of P's, uh, we can start animating. So what I'm going to do is layer by layer, I'm just going to take the keyframes that are on our first frame, I'm going to go to our last frame and paste them, and then I'm going to go to the middle here and I'm going to just quickly deform them. Now of course, um, excuse me, I didn't have just an individual point selected there, so I'll just make sure to deselect everything, come through and just choose my one puppet pin that I want like so. I'm just going to quickly deform these. Now I'm obviously not going to put loads of time into this because it is just for the sake of a tutorial. But say we stretch out all of these like so. That's created us some keyframes. We'll just hit F9 to give them a bit of easing and you can see how that animation comes into play. Now you can do exactly the same for all of your other layers as well. We're going to take all the keyframes here, copy and paste them again in the middle. And we'll just start moving these around, excuse me. Um, moving these around individually. So we'll bring this guy up, squash him around. You'll notice that um, because of the starch points and things that we put into place, it's actually a little bit easier to start manipulating stuff because the limbs of our octopus don't get squashed so much. Um, if, it were, if I was doing this for real, I'd probably put each of these limbs on a separate layer anyway. Um, but for the sake of this tutorial, it's totally fine. Let's just quickly ease these. 
and we'll do the same quick thing for the last layer copy and paste these into each position and then wobble them about excuse me uh, wobble them about in the middle like so okay quickly ease those and there you go as a very quick example there is the puppet bin tool <laughs> He's a bit of a wonky octopus. I think the octopus we made in the uh, previous example that I did when testing this is a bit more realistic in his movements. Um, but he's gone now. I'll pop him up on the screen now. That was the original one that we made. So that's it, really. Um, thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you appreciate this quick foray into the puppet pin world. Um, it is a big, big uh, topic. So um, let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. Uh, uh, or likewise. Make sure um, if you have any other questions at all, pop them in the comments on Discord, Twitter, Instagram, whatever you want. I'll do my best to get back to you. Uh, otherwise, I'll see you all next time on TipTap. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.